Well, thanks, guys. Well, I'm here with two of CBC's finest, Mr. Murray and Mr. Getz. Thank you all very much for coming. And uh, I have a few uh, questions for you guys. So sure. to start, how did you two get your start at CBC? Well, uh, I started in 1979, and it was, uh, it was my first job out of college. So wow. I've literally been here since I got out of college. Pretty and Mr. Cool. Getz came a few years later. Yeah, I was, I was working in the city. Uh, one of the companies that I was working for was having trouble. And Mr. Murray heard about it and called me up and said, hey, come to CBC. I'm awesome. building a theater. <laughs> and he and I had worked together before in professional companies around town, so we knew each other. And that's awesome. Uh, throughout your time at CBC, what are some of the most like standout performances from cast or crew that you, uh, you really liked? Well, all the performances are basically standouts because our kids are great, as you know. Um, memorable show, I guess High School Musical would be our biggest hit. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was just ridiculous. We had a thousand billion people come to see the show. Mm -hmm. uh, Production-wise, I think the most difficult one was Wizard of Oz. We brought in flying from a company from oh, yeah. Vegas. And they, That's helped, they helped us fly the witches and everybody. The wizard came flying in the house. We didn't do the house. We, had, we used video with it and the house was on it. Yeah, we used video before anybody else was using video in town. But uh, yeah, I mean, we've, we've done a lot. We've done Shakespeare. We've done a ton of musicals. We've done small plays. We've done shows in the black box. They're all different. It's all different, but it's all good. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of High School Musical, um, not many people know this, but we were the first high school ever to do High School Musical. Well, we were the first high school to do it that wasn't the Disney-sponsored tryout show yeah they yeah. called us and said would you like to do it and we said sure and then it was a good move on our part because mm -hmm. we got a ton of publicity so, so, so how many people do you say we got we did nine shows, shows wow. of a high school show so basically 360 times nine and it was insane because that meant three days of two show days and the kids were pretty pooped <laughs> but, uh, you know, they were basically celebrities. Well, the guy that played Troy had to stay on stage after the show and sign autographs. Really? For the preteen yeah. girls that came down, they really wanted his autograph. That's he, funny. He was quite popular. Mm -hmm. So, to your knowledge, do you know of any series player alumni who have gone on to work professionally in the theater world? A lot of people have worked professionally, especially in tech. A lot of production people. Um, a lot of sound and um, a couple in lighting. But the, the thing that's really odd about it is that we also have guys that have become lawyers. We have two, uh, Zach Broviak is a lawyer, and uh, Tom Burnoff. Burnoff, thank you. I, I, I added it, it went away. Who was Cogsworth when we did Beauty and the Beast. Oh, that's cool. And, and that, was, that was a good production, too. That was very effective. And it's, it's when that whole cast comes together and, and the, the scenery and the lighting work with it that it's, I mean, there's, there's many... We've got four or five of the young women that did shows that are on Broadway or doing Broadway companies now. Really? We have some of our young men who are <laughs> way graduated that work for uh, major networks and are casting directors. Uh, we have a lot of actors who are working, especially in Chicago and New York. Uh, none of them are big stars, but they're professional actors. When last I checked, we had between 60 and 70 guys who made this their business and their careers. So they're working all over the country. So yeah, they're working. It's good. That's awesome. So throughout the rehearsal process of a play or musical, what does a typical day look like for the both of you? <laughs> does it well, change day by day kind no, of thing? Well, yeah, but it, it also depends on what part of the rehearsal process we're in, like the, the part we're in now. Mr. Getz and I are pretty much going to be here at least 12 hours a day work, working the show, uh, rehearsing for the opening of Godspell in basically a week and a half. Uh, so it's pretty intense, but it doesn't just involve here. It, you bring it home, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you've got a lot of prep you have to do at your own house and a lot of running around picking up props and materials for building, and it's nuts. Mm -hmm. we, try to, we try to keep the economy under control, too, so it means you can't order thousands of dollars worth of lumber. You have to do it as it's used up. You replace a little bit at a time. And it takes more time to do that, but it also keeps the economy under control. So mm -hmm. I think we, we can find that. Well, 
we, you know, we do four shows a year and a lot of schools only do two. So we, we're doing four shows with a budget that a lot of schools have for one. So we, uh, Mr. Getz especially, is brilliant at managing the money. It's old summer, summer stock trips. Yeah, a lot of stuff that we've done. We also have a big costume storage area because we reuse them constantly. Again, it's just about we have to make do so that we can do more for you guys so mm -hmm. we can do more shows. Yeah. Uh, so what is it you guys like about teaching at CBC so much that has kept you here? We work together really well. We don't, <laughs> we don't have, uh, sometimes with production meetings and a theater product performance event, there are meetings after meetings after meetings and we have been doing this for so long that we have it, kind of have a shorthand. Plus we can catch each other between classes and, and communicate that way. Because there, you know, there's so many changes in the rehearsal process. The stretcher doesn't work, or this doesn't work, and, um, and we need this instead. And that all gets taken care of in a much more efficient way than it is when you're outside of that loop. Plus, the facility is great for me. I mean, for production, I can't ask for anything better. The lighting is so easy to do here. It's so easy to do it fast. And the shop is big enough to do whatever we want. You know, we spill out on the stage, but, but uh, it's a lot of floor space. Some ways we have a better floor space than Washington. Wow. And, and we get along really well. We've been doing this together for over 25 years. So <laughs> it's, you know, we do have a shorthand that we just sort of know what each other wants. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty easy to work. And then you, uh, the students are great. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they work really hard in the shop and they work really hard in rehearsal. I mean, we, we do a rehearsal process unlike a lot of the schools. We don't spend 12 weeks on a play. We do them in six. Yeah. And therefore, it's a lot of work and it's intense. We don't uh, spend a lot of time goofing off. Even the tech is like that. When we do that Saturday tech where we have what they call dry tech, where it's just the lighting crew and, and a few other people, we'll, we'll knock that out in four or five hours. And I've talked to high schools that run 10 hour marathons and everybody stays up till one in the morning to do it. And I, I asked once, yeah, well, if you're paying students, if you were paying a crew, you couldn't do that. So you'd be yeah. bankrupt. You'd but, be bankrupt. And you know that when it's, it's where rehearsal says you're over at six, boom, we're done. Mm -hmm. Because you guys have things to do. and But so do we, we have lives. So, although most of our lives are spent here. Yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> it really does. But it's, it's good. Yeah, it's fun. But there's almost 70 years of experience in this building between, the, or well, at least in these two buildings, mm -hmm. between the two of us. So we sort of know what we're doing mm -hmm. at Definitely. this point. Uh, do you guys have any dream shows that you've never been able to do before? Ooh, a dream show. Well, we hit all the big ones. <laughs> yeah, we pretty much hit the most of the old classics. We hit all of those. There's a few new shows that I'd want to do, but I'm scared of. I mean, well, well some there's some that you just can't do because yeah. we're a Catholic school, and some some of the materials just. It's changed. I'd I'd love to do uh, uh, a show like The Color Purple or something like yeah. that, but that would require that we do a lot of recruiting of performers, and uh, that that would be a tough type of show. We have to do the shows that would fit our student body yeah. that we have. And be accomplished in that six to eight weeks of build time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's what's the one with uh, uh, Bialystok and uh, you know oh, Bialystok and Bloom? Um, the producers. The producers. I've always wanted to do the producers, mm -hmm. but then you you'd be like, well, I don't, I don't know if we can get away with a couple of sequences in the producers. And I go, ah, that's, so I think that would be the show I would really like to do, but I really don't think we can. Ah. And sometimes I like, and this is not from a tech person, but sometimes I like those really small shows where it, the, the support behind them is not really that significant. It just is a little bit of this and that. And this show is very much like that. We're not, we're not trying to step in front of anything. It's not about the location. Uh, a recent one I just saw the, the video of it come from, come from Away. Come from Away, yeah. And I was floored by it. And I heard really good things about it. I was like, ah, I'd like to do that. And I bought the soundtrack last year just to listen to it and yeah. figure out, oh, boy, 
Yeah, I really like to do that one too. Well, would we, we'd have a ball. I just, it, but the vocal demands of that show are pretty intense, mm -hmm. so we'd have to really think about that. You know, I think that's where we come to the conclusion that we, in in the selection of the plays, I've said numerous times when we were having a discussion with plays, I kind of don't care what we do, as what far as productions go, because it is that support element. So it, it, we have to look at the cast that's available between Mr. Martin and Mr. Miller about vocal qualities and acting ability. Otherwise, there's no point in it. But sometimes we pick something where there's strain, there's tremendous strain on tech, and other times where there's not. And that, that sometimes makes and We have to think about whether we do two shows back to back that are going to be so difficult to tech that you know the tech guys would go nuts, mm -hmm. or do two shows back to back where the vocal demands are too tough. So we have a bunch of actors running around straining all the time. Can't do that. We've yeah. had that in shows where they <laughs> don't talk before the show. Don't talk before the show or you know, try to keep from gossiping so much, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Well, so this question is kind of hard, but do you have a favorite play or musical that you've done here before? Like of anything? Think of one you really enjoy? Well, I do. So what is it? Jesus Christ Superstar in 2000. That was just an amazingly strong cast, most of whom went on to do this professionally, including most of the young ladies and most of the young gentlemen. They did this, and then a whole bunch of them that didn't go on professionally, but were awesome. And that cast still hangs out together. That's cool. They still hang out together. 21 years mm -hmm. later, they still they have a reunion every Christmas and get together, and uh, they, they're all over the country, and when they come in for Christmas, they all gather somewhere. I agree. That was, and that was that whole, that whole group, as they went through school, developed like that. Oh, yeah, they were, they were tight like, the whole time. They, they, it was a mostly senior cast, and they were just always together. That's really cool. Well, thank you guys both very much for meeting with me. Uh, this has been really awesome. Uh, I'm Devin Heron, Lesson in the Back of the Anchor.